This is WBAA, I'm Mike Lowitzo. The General Lew Wallace Study and Museum in Crawfordsville is a National Historic Landmark designed by the Civil War general and author of Ben-Hur himself. It was constructed in the late 1890s, costing about $30,000. Now, renovation work is estimated at 10 times that. I recently visited the study to talk about it with museum director Larry Parlberg. It was a private retreat for him. Like a lot of public people, when he was out and about and planned to be out and about, he was a very big personality. But I think, particularly as he got older, this was a place for him to retreat and recharge his batteries. And he enjoyed doing that through research, uh, through writing. He continued to fish. For many years after the building was built, there was a moat on two sides. And in the summer, he'd sit on the back terrace and fish. And in the winter, there are stories that he'd sit in the basement and fire up the furnace and open the basement windows and stick fishing poles out and sit in the basement in a rocking chair with the furnace going and keep fishing. So it was just his private retreat. What changes have happened over the years, if any? There have not been a lot of changes. There were things that have happened over the years. Carpets were put down. We've taken those out. The back door was closed up decades ago, and that's been restored and reopened. So the presentation now is very much as it was in his day. Unfortunately, there are some interior photographs that show at least furniture placements and placements of the art and some of the other things. Um, We've had curtains recreated that cover the book collection. So the building, when you walk in, is really very much as he presented it in the 1890s. 120 years or so it's been what needs work. The city of Crawfordsville owns the building, and they've been pretty good stewards. So structurally, it's in good shape. We did, a couple of years, uh, do restoration on the copper roof. After 120 years, it had begun to fail, so we have replaced that. In the course of doing that, did some interior paint conservation and restoration to find out what the original colors were. They'd never been documented, and in black and white photographs, you really can't see what's going on. So we had some conservators come in, one from Maryland and some from Indianapolis, and found the original paint treatment, which was a lot more sophisticated than we anticipated. We thought we would find it was blue or pink or green or whatever it was and repaint it and we'd be done. And instead, we found a very sophisticated paint treatment, including some frescoes up in the vault that represent Wallace's military career. So we have restored just a little bit of that and are just now beginning to raise money to do a full restoration of the interior and a rewiring. The building has not had any total upgrade to the electrical system since the 1890s. Any idea as to how much one or both will cost? We've gotten some estimates from architects, from electricians, and from the conservators that did the little bit of work that we have exposed for the public to see at the moment. And we put all those numbers together, and it comes up to 300000 So that's what we're shooting for, and we hope that it doesn't take too long to raise the money so that we can keep those estimates good. Describe what is in this corner that they uncovered back in 2011. Well, it's a neat project, and Wallace was an artist in his own right, so it shouldn't have surprised us that he'd have kind of a colorful building to look at because there are not very many windows in the space. So we started with a very dark blue at the bottom that then through a color fade goes to a very light gray-green blue up near at, at about 25 feet or so. And then there's a band of decorative plaster and what we were surprised to find is that it was all gilded in the 1890s and in this plaster band there are flowers and in each flower there's a light bulb so it was a very theatrical presentation when he would turn on the lights at night and all of these there was about 50 bulbs would sparkle with this 23 karat gilding and then above that there's a vault and it's in the vault that there is a military scene we don't know what it really is that's going to be part of the fun and kind of part of the scary part of uncovering it is because we don't know what it looks like the one corner that's exposed looks to be like a fife and drum and we have found an interview from a young woman a native of crawfordsville who wanted to do something special to remember january 1st 1900 and she interviewed wallace and she mentioned the frescoes that the general designed that represented his military career And she talks about banners and shields and cannons and things like that. So we think we'll find those at the midpoint in the vault and at the four corners probably we're guessing musical instruments. So there'll probably be trumpets and other things like that that represent military themes. But we don't know. It's going to be kind of fun, kind of paint archaeology to figure out what actually is under there as they take the nine layers of paint off. That's Larry Parlberg, director of the General Lou Wallace Study and Museum in Crawfordsville. The Jeffress Family Foundation is offering a $100,000 grant for the renovations, which must be matched with $200,000 from other sources. More information about the study is on our website, wbaa.org. I'm Mike Lowitzo. You're listening to WBAA.